Hello everyone and welcome back to Gage Hill Crafts. I'm Sarah and today, uh, as promised, I have a little um, dyeing tip for you based on a technique that um, we did in the dye workshop last weekend and that I've also used to dye some uh, yarns for myself and yarns for sale. Um, and that is dip dyeing to create stripes or self-striping yarn um, or variegated yarn. So, um, you know, there's many different dye techniques, um, and I'm certainly not an expert on all of them. Um, there's tray steaming, there's kettle dyeing, there's spraying, all kinds of things. Um, but one of the easiest things to do if you are a kettle dyer um, or you use this technique uh, for your own purposes at home or just for crafts um, is to leave the skein half in and half out of the dye pot or some other proportion and that allows you to change the color of one section of the yarn without changing the color of the other section and you don't need any fancy equipment or extra equipment to do this um, so I have an example and I posted the um, undyed version of this a uh, picture of it on Instagram with my pots set up in this fun way and I have the final version to show you here so here it is and I'll explain um, what we're looking at it's a six yard skein so it's very long and you can see maybe on camera some of the colors shifting a little bit now it's fairly subtle and I don't know that the camera's picking up all of the changes like this section we're in is kind of tangerine and then we get back into more of a peach pink section. And we're back to tangerine. And so you can see that as you knit this up, you're going to get these subtle changes in color. And so the way that I did this was I first dipped two ends of this very long skein, each into different dye pots. Um, one was Osage Orange and one was um, Queen Anne's Lace, which we picked um, right here on the farm. And I let those sit for probably 30 minutes or so in warm but not hot dye vats. Um, then I took the entire skein and put it into a matter vat. Rose matter is a, um, is a plant, it's a ground cover, and the roots can be used to yield um, reds into kind of coral colors usually is what you get. Um, so like that would be a section that was dyed with only the matter over the, the section that I hadn't dip dyed previously. And then this is probably the Osage orange um, over dyed with matter. So you can see that there are subtle differences in that. And um, just allowing the yarn to hang partially into the dye bath and partially out of the pot um, you do want to be careful if you have a flame going underneath the pot. I usually don't do this um, with a flame on. I, I do it, I warm up the dye vat and then turn the flame off before I put my yarn in. Um, just because I don't want to scorch or burn or melt or set fire to anything. Um, but like I said, it's a very easy method and you can even do things like dye um, dye some of your skeins or dye them halfway and then um, at the end of your dye day if you have leftover color in your dye pots flip that skein around um, or dip one into it into another pot and just leave the pots out in the sun for a few days and just that um, residual heat and the, the passive solar from the sunshine will be enough to heat the the pot and make the dye adhere to your yarn um, and so that can be a really fun way to you know use up every last little bit of color in your dye vats and also play with different combinations without having to use entire skeins or see how different combinations contrast compare and contrast with you know single colors um, and you know, certainly keep notes and, and figure out what you what colors you like and, and how you got those combinations. Um, I will say that uh, in all of this, I'm talking about doing this with natural dyes um, because the yarn is pre-mordanted. 
the natural dye will then stick onto the yarn, um, actually without any application of heat, just time will do the trick, um, but heat will speed up the process. This doesn't work the way that I do acid dyeing and the way that I think most people do acid dyeing is you apply the dye first and then you add a, a fixative, which is the acid. And so that wouldn't work in this method. You'd have to use a different kind of um, dip dyeing process to get that to work. But for natural dyeing, because the fixative is already on the yarn, it's gonna grab onto the dye molecules. So you don't have to worry about um, your colors getting muddy. Um, and I hope that made sense. Um, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below and I will try to explain it better. Um, anyway, let me know if you are taking advantage of all this warm weather. We've, we've, uh, we've had a couple of weekends now where it's been pretty hot outside. Sorry about that. My slow cooker just told me that dinner was ready and was beeping a lot. Um, so as I was saying, we've had a lot of hot weather, um, which makes it a little bit difficult to, to work outside, but it's also the perfect time to um, do all your dyeing because you want to be outside in the fresh air, I think, um, when you're doing dye projects, especially working with things like alum um, that have a fume to them. It's nice to take advantage of the good weather and just, um, you know, get, get all your dyeing done in big batches. That's the way I like to do it. Um, I do also like to use hot weather and sunshine for um, passively heating my dye vats, as I was just saying. So that's another great reason to do it this time of year. Um, if you are doing natural dyes, um, if you enjoy doing that, or if you have other tips or tricks that you've been playing around with, other experiments that have turned out successfully, please leave us a comment or get in touch. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and trade tips and tricks. That'd be great. Um, tune in next week and we'll have more crafts for you. Cheers!